I'm Dr. David Saperstein, the director for Center for Complex Neurology, EDS, and POTS in Phoenix, Arizona. I'd like to talk about the topic of hypermobility spectrum disorder. We get asked this a lot. Uh, in fact, we, we get people upset that we don't talk about HSD and we refer just to Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And that's not because we're excluding you. It's um, because in my mind, they're really the same thing. And that brings us to, well, if they're the same thing, why are they different topics? And that's a very complicated uh, story. It's complicated for the physicians and clinicians who deal with EDS and HSD, and it's certainly complicated for you. And so what I hope to do with this video is to explain these concepts. So concept is the right word. These are man-made or person-made constructs um, that have been arbitrarily made. So why? Well, we know that there are these connective tissue disorders that are genetic called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and there's different kinds and different types. Far and away, the most common type is what's called hypermobile EDS. And a few years ago, or prior to 2017, pretty much if somebody was hypermobile and had maybe one or a couple of other features, they would qualify for a diagnosis of EDS. And at the time, it was called EDS type 3. In 2017, a group of geneticists got together to make new criteria. And the reason for that was that they realized that, well, simply being hypermobile wasn't necessarily a disorder in and of itself. Some people are more flexible than others. So the question was, when does that shift over to being a disorder, to being a medical condition? And when might we consider it a form of EDS? So that was the goal in 2017, and it was a very good goal. It was a very difficult goal. And so what happened was a group of geneticists created criteria. So step one is somebody hypermobile, and there's certain criteria for that called the Baden scale. And uh, we have another video that explains that in more detail. So if somebody's abnormally hypermobile, then the next question is, do they meet some additional criteria? And if so, they would be considered as having hypermobile EDS. Some of those criteria include skin that's more stretchy than it should be, skin that's softer than it should be, a tendency towards scarring in a certain way, having stretch marks not explained by changes in weight, for instance, having um, hernias, having other complications. Um, and they came up with, the geneticists came up with this point system. So there were 12 potential points, and if you scored five or more, then by definition you had EDS, and now they decided to call it hypermobile EDS instead of EDS type three. But if you had less than five points, you were put in a group called hypermobility spectrum disorder, which gets even more complicated from that but we'll just speak of generalized hypermobility spectrum disorder. So largely that's somebody who has features very similar to a person with hypermobile EDS, but just doesn't have all those points. So what does that mean for you if you have the diagnosis of HSD? It can mean different things. It could mean you simply have hypermobile EDS, and you just don't have enough points, or you might not have EDS and you might just be hypermobile. 